Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Sure. Today I'll be presenting a case of 24-year-old boy who came to our ER with complaints of fever with chills and rigor since last five days. On 10 second assessment, patient was conscious oriented and obeying commands. Airway was patent, there was no secretion or pooling of saliva. Breathing patient had a respiratory rate of 20 per minute with a saturation of 98% at room air. Circulation patient had a BP of 110 bar 60 mm Hg with a pulse rate of 108 per minute. Pa dis coming to disability, patient had a GCS of 15 after 15 with pupils equal and reactive to light. On exposure, Patient had a temperature of 101 degree with a GRBS of 110 milligram per deciliter. So at this time, we had put cannula for the patient and given, after ruling out any allergic to drug, we have given a paracetamol injection 1 gram IV stat. Okay. Adjuncts to the primary survey, we had taken a CBC CRP point of care and uh, it was showing a total count of 5.2 with a HB of 15, platelet of 75,000 and CRP of 68. Sample history, patient presented with complaints of fever with chills and rigor since last 5 days. What are the differential diagnoses for fever, chills and rigors? Uh, usually, uh, most common is urinary tract, urinary tract infection, infection can cause viral pneumonias can have any abscesses in the body can have malaria fever. Okay, these are the common causes. causes. Uh, patient presented with complaints of fever with chills and rigor since last 5 days. Fever was high grade and uh, on taking paracetamol it was re relieving but again it was reappearing. Patient also complained of headache, myalgia and generalized tiredness. There was no history of seizures or altered sensorium, no history of cough or breathing difficulty, no history of abdominal pain, dysuria or increased frequency of micturation, no history of vomiting or loose stools. Uh, there was no bleeding manifestations or rashes. Uh, coming to the allergic history, patient didn't have any allergic to the drugs. Medical history, no uh, relevant medical history. Past history, patient had a recent travel history to uh, Orisa uh, uh, about 15 days back. On general examination, patient was conscious and oriented. There was no pallor, icterus, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy or edema. Coming to the respiratory system, air entry was bilaterally equal with normal vesicular breath sounds. No V's or Krebs was there. Uh, CVS S1, S2 was heard. CNS, there was no focal neurological deficits. There was no neck stiffness. Parabdomen was soft, non-tender and spleen was not palpable. Uh, so, at this point of time, uh, since the patient had thrombocytopenia of 75,000 with a CRP of 68, we had started the patient empirically on uh, doxycycline and then we had admitted the patient. We had also sent workups for dengue. We had sent dengue, NS1 antigen and IgG IgM. Also, since what patient… What is the difference between NS1 and IgG IgM? Initial 5 days of fever, we can send NS1 antigen mm. and then IgG uh, following that we can send it uh, represents the current acute infection. IgG. IgM. IgM. M, and IgG is past infection. So, uh, that workup was sent. Also, since the patient gave a history of travel to Orisa, we had also sent malarial antigen for this patient. And uh, on coming to the labs, then uh, malarial antigen came positive for the patient. Okay. So, then hence we started the patient on malarial treatment. Okay. So, we had uh, given, started the patient on tab, uh, in uh, artisunate. What are the anti-malarials, you know? Uh, chloroquine can be given, primaquine can be given. Chloroquine is anti-malarial, acute treatment. Primaquine is only to prevent. prevent. Chloroquine is one treatment. One treatment. Then then if chloroquine resistant areas, we can give artisunate, then alternate. the second drug? Chloro after chloroquine, one more drug came. Quinine. 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 Third drug is artisunate, arti 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 artimeter, all these things. Sorry. What is the dose of chloroquine? Uh, what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of chloroquine? Uh, usually chloroquine uh, has uh, drug interactions uh, so, uh, and then it can also cause hypoglycemia in patients. Then uh, uh, it can cause uh, QT prolongation and torsadis point. This it can is also quinine. Quinine scan. Chloroquine is basically nowadays we are using mainly for uh, rheumatoid arthritis, hydroxychloroquine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chloroquine sulfate is available even now. Mm -hmm. It can be used for malaria, but most of the cases it is resistant. resistant. That's why we are not using. Chloroquine sulfate, what is the dose? Uh, usually we give initially uh, 300 mg, uh, we give and then for stat. The tablets are available. 
டேப்லெட்ஸ் குளோரோக்கின் ஒன் ஃபிஃப்டி இஸ் த பேஸ் டூ ஃபிஃப்டி இஸ் குளோரோக்கின் சல்ஃபேட் இட் இஸ் அவைலபிள் அஸ் குளோரோக்கின் குளோரோக்கின் சல்ஃபேட் டூ ஃபிஃப்டி மில்லி கிராம் டூ டேப்லெட்ஸ் சாரி ஃபோர் டேப்லெட்ஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் தென் டூ டேப்லெட்ஸ் ஆஃப்டர் சிக்ஸ் ஹவர்ஸ் டூ டேப்லெட்ஸ் தென் நான்வெட்ஸ் ஓகே இஸ் தர் எனி சைட் எஃபெக்ட் ஃபார் குளோரோக்கின் Uh, if the the patient patient. is is having any G6PD deficiency, okay, sometimes it it can produce it cause hemolysis hemolysis. in the patient. Okay, that is more with primacin. Even then, it can produce. Okay, any other side effect? Mm. Any advantage of uh, chloroquine over other antimalarials? It reduces fever. It reduces fever. That is advantage. See, if you give chloroquine immediately, patient's fever will subside. Okay. That's why whenever we start chloroquine in any patient, you can see that malaria... Even if malaria is not resist, see, even if it is resistant to your tablet, patient responds very well because the fever comes down. It's an anti-inflammatory drug. Okay. So, chloroquine can, even now it can be started, but many areas it is resistant. So, we avoid that. Quinine, what is the dose? Uh, quinine, uh, 6 mg per kg. 10 mg per kg. Stupid. IV, uh, same, 10 mg. What are the side effects of quinine? Why uh, it was uh, removed from the treatment? Basically, when we give quinine to the patient, it causes hypoglycemia in patients. Okay, that's why we always so give in dextrose. dextrose. Okay. Then? Uh, then it can also cause um, QTC, prolo- there will be QT prolongation causing torsadis point. This can happen okay, in the patient. What is torsadis point? Uh, there will be um, polymorphic VT. What is the peculiar nature of that VT? the peculiar direction uh, peculiar nature of torsad is d point is white qrs is vt what is polymorphic if and amplitude is not correct it is twisting around the axis okay some will be positive, positive. some will be negative okay. some will be positive some will be negative what is the bi- bidirectional vt is both are same no both are not same no. by bi-direct- bi- directional vt means one complex positive one complex negative next complex positive next is negative that is each one will be going up and down whereas torsad is point is some complexes like four five complex are positive then four five complex are negative okay what is the treatment for that magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate okay that's why quinine <coughs> is also removed from the treatment uh, this one uh, treatment Uh, uh, like the uh, drugs and uh, what else sorry uh, what else it can produce hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia already told drug interactions can cause drug interactions, interactions can. can cause why it produces hypoglycemia uh, because uh, uh, quinine increases the insulin insulin secretion. secretion what are the other reasons for hypoglycemia in malaria Uh, hypoglycemia uh, initially it affects the li- when it affects the liver uh, gluconeogenesis will be reduced okay. also uh, uh, glycogen storage in the liver will be reduced okay. and there will be anaerobic uh, because of the uh, uh, malarial antigen uh, malarial parasite they can be also anaerobic production malarial, malarial. parasite utilizes sugar Utilize. liver failure can produce uh, uh, like uh, hypoglycemia third one is quinine mm. so because of all these things quinine is also no- removed from the treatment regime okay pregnancy can, is it safe uh, pregnancy quinine? quinine is not safe quinine is it's not, not safe. safe so that's why uh, this newer generation this drugs, drugs they, they have come to picture uh, artisanate a, RPA, RPA. RPA. what is this drug what is the classification of this drug which comes under which classification artemisinin artemisinin artemis artemis they are come origin from they are chinese uh, herbal chinese medicine, herbal medicine. <laughs> okay so they are generated from <coughs> that king has so derivative okay so from that group it has derivative okay is there any proven resistant for artesunate in india in india no currently no no okay but even then we are we are suspecting that or we are anticipating some sort of resistance even for uh, artesunate that's why we are always add one more drug to the regime okay some guidelines have told that you add one more drug to the regime like that's why we add uh, doxycycline Doxycycle. okay so two or three drugs can be added together so that the resistance can uh, like it can prevent resistance what is the dose of uh, artesunate uh, usually artesunate we give in the dosage of 120 mg stat and then followed by uh, 60 mg for 6 days okay 
uh, in cases of severe malaria then we prefer uh, double do- uh, like what iv severe malaria uh, in severe malaria is mostly co- uh, it is caused by uh, falciparum plasmodium falciparum and then patient will be having symptoms of um, lactic acidosis can be there hypoglycemia can be so there you have to tell me reasons for each one mm-hmm. what is the reason for lactic acidosis uh, lactic acidosis because uh, since it affects the liver the lactic clearance also will be low and uh, lactate production by the parasite also will be more mm-hmm. and then since there is um, clubbing of the rbcs uh, the, there can be hypoperfusion also thereby also lactate what will be increased what is this called as uh, it is cytoadherence hmm? cytoadherence and rosette formation rosette formation okay so that can reduce the circulation to internal, internal organs. organs. Uh, lactic acidosis is one of the most important finding which can tell you that patient is having uh, severe malaria. Okay. Then then secondly most common is found hypoglycemia can be there. Okay. Lactic acidosis can be there. Then patient can develop renal uh, failure because due to low perfusion to the kidneys it can cause renal okay. failure. Okay. Then patient can develop jaundice. Then uh, coming to the CNS patient what can... What are the reasons for jaundice in malaria? Uh, in jaundice... Um, Uh, due to hemolysis bilirubin okay. so first reason is hemolysis not liver disease mm-hmm. then liver disease liver also can develop then uh, in cns uh, patient can develop seizures can be there uh, patient will what is it called as uh, co- cerebral coma patient after seizure cerebral coma cerebral mal- malaria okay. uh, uh, the seizures can be there Cere- uh, cerebral uh, patient can go into coma state then patient develop severe uh, generalized uh, fatigability can be there okay then bleeding man bleeding manifestation patient can develop patient can also go into shock okay. bac shock okay so this is known as severe malaria so in cases of severe malaria then we prefer iv artesunate 2.4 uh, mg per kg we give initially start dose following that 6th and uh, 12th and then uh, daily dosage is given okay. along with that we can give doxycycline also 100 mg bd for 7 days can be given okay what is black water fever black water you are from northeast states you should know that hemoglobin eh? area due to black water fever patients on chloroquine prophylaxis when they develop malaria they develop severe hemolysis due to some reason i don't know that is called as black water fever algid malaria Uh, patients having uh, malaria can develop a addition, super added infection Which with infection? a gram negative mostly yeah. salmonella, salmonella. so that there. is very common we had uh, one patient recently malaria will be coexisting with many other diseases like dengue can be there uh, typhoid can be there hiv can be there hiv incidence of malaria in hiv is uh, very severe okay so all these things can coexist because one uh, one infection your immunity is low another infection can easily come in okay so we have to be very careful if the procalcitonin levels are very high we have to always suspect uh, salmonella typhi along with malaria okay so this patient uh, is in, uh his uh, malarial antigel came to be as positive for plasmodium vivax okay. so we had started the patient on artesunate what are the investigations available for malaria uh, the gold standard is the blood smear thick smear and thin smear can be done gold standard is not thick smear and Old standard is thick smear and thin smear. That is yeah. the easiest way. Old standard means there is no other investigation after that. See, the problem with the uh, slide preparation, if you are not seeing it properly, if the technician or doctor is not seeing all the fields, then you, there is a high chance of missing the uh, parasite. But it is the easiest one and it, is, it can be practiced anywhere. Okay. So uh, thin smear and thick smear. Thin smear, we get the species. Thick smear, we can uh, identify the presence of the parasite. Okay. Uh, then buffy coat can be done. Mm. Uh, we centrifuge the blood and uh, add the acridin orange. Okay. And then at the uh, interference between the RBCs and the buffy layer, we can see the parasites, quantify okay. them. Okay. Uh, then uh, antigen test, uh, rapid antigen test can be done. Then uh, pl- LDH test, plasmodium LDH not routinely done. That also can be done okay. in the patient. Okay. then monoclonal antibody test against the histidine rich protein okay. can be also done okay. these are the common investigations okay. so here the patient was started on artesunate as the treatment 120 mg stat was given with, with doxycycline ah uh, yes with doxycycline we had given the patient and on discharge we have discharged the patient with primaquin 15 mg od for 14 days okay what are the side effects of primaquin uh, 
What is the other factor? In G6, G6PD deficiency. Only if there is a G6PD deficiency, deficiency, they develop hemolysis. hemolysis. Suppose the patient develops hemolysis, how do you manage it? They should stop the drug should in the patient. Just stop it and add which drug. Which drug can be added to the patient, given to the patient. For Not for malaria, okay. for uh, hemolysis. Is there any drug uh, which can be used, useful in hemolysis? Is there any vitamin which can be used? Vitamin E. But folic acid. Folic acid. So, only thing the destruction is more, so we have to increase the production, that's all. <coughs> so, folic acid is a drug which is given for all types of hemolysis. It is not going to prevent hemolysis. Mm. So, the, uh, the destruction is more, so you need to produce more, that's all. So, you need to give vitamin B12 and folic acid. Normally, folic acid, folic acid stores will be depleted very fast. So, we have to supplement folic acid for every patient who develops this one. Otherwise, there is no nothing is required. Just stop it. It, it will come. It can come back to normal. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Uh, then about the chemo prophylaxis. When we travel to the endemic area, usually chemo prophylaxis is given one to two days prior to the traveling, up to one week after the return. So if it is chloroquine sensitive, uh, sensitive, then we can give chloroquine 150 mg two tablets weekly, or we can go ahead with proguanil 100 mg daily. If it is a resistant area, then we have to give doxycycline 100 mg daily or mefloquine also can be given in the patient. Uh, then uh, tropical splenomegaly syndrome is there. Uh, that is uh, seen in uh, patients in hyperendemic areas. So, when uh, they will be having massive splenomegaly and hemolysis. Mm. So, usually uh, the treatment for this is uh, folic acid 5 mg daily and proguanil 100 mg daily can be given to these what patients. What are the reasons for such massive splenomegaly? Nothing yeah. to do with emergency mm -hmm. medicine. But if you see, a, see, here we don't see, in Kerala, we don't see any massive splenomegaly in malaria. But if you go to any other state other than Kerala, you can, you can see a lot of massive splenomegaly cases. Sequestration of the RBCs. No, what are the differential diagnosis for that? Don't think that malaria is not, is the only condition which can produce massive spleen. There are a lot of other things. CML. CML, CML can be there. CML. Lymphoma. Huh? CML. Lymphoma, CML. leukemia. Leukemia, lymphoma, lymphoma and CLD. CLD. Normally, it will not be massive splenomegaly, moderate splenomegaly. Mainly this type of conditions. Mm -hmm. Leukemia, lymphoma, CML. Okay. Anything else? You want to add? Nothing. Okay. Thank you.